Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ebb and Flow podcast, episode 20. My name is Ben, and today the topic is raw honey and raw milk. Um, so my experience with raw honey, I'll start off with raw honey, has been, uh, I guess, more of my life I've been consuming raw honey than raw milk. And uh, probably a lot of people would be more keen to try raw honey before they tried raw milk. And that's because I think the general consensus is that people are afraid of raw milk. And that was certainly the case for me. I would have, you know, three years ago, even as early as that, would have said, yeah, raw milk is disgusting. Why why would you drink, like it's straight from the cow, like you don't want it to be pasteurized because we're taught growing up that pasteurization is good uh, for milk. But to get back onto raw honey, raw honey is a little bit more accepting of people are open to trying raw honey mostly before trying raw milk. Um, so this is uh, going to be another research episode where I have Twitter threads pulled up on both raw honey and raw milk. And I, like my parents have bought raw honey for a while. And I never knew the difference between raw and processed honey uh, until I started looking it up on the internet and seeing that if honey isn't labeled as raw, um, then it has gone through a heating process uh, where it does get pasteurized and um, in some of the bacteria uh, inside is is killed. And it's like I used to have honey out of those like plastic bear containers. Um, but... The, the benefits of raw honey were a lot more extensive than I thought. Um, I, I knew like raw honey was like a little more earthy tasting, a little bit more tasting like a flower because that's how honey is made because the bees interact with the flower. But, um... So I always thought it actually tasted a little bit worse than pasteurized honey or processed honey. And to be honest, I'm not <clears throat> too knowledgeable of the actual benefits of raw honey, but that's why this is a research episode. Um, so I can learn stuff in real time. Um, but from memory, before I get into the thread, I know that raw honey is a powerful antioxidant. So um, you, when you have oxidative stress, when you have free radicals in your body, which are um, positively charged ions, meaning that they are looking to steal an electron from uh, another cell in your body and that causes oxidative stress. So uh, honey being anti uh, antioxidant, it... It uh, satisfies those positive ions in your body, uh, which just leads to less oxidative stress. And um, it's anti-inflammatory, so you tend to lose weight um, from from eating raw honey. And I, I've personally, I've been putting raw honey on like almost everything. I eat uh, just because it's so good and it's so good for you. Um, what have I been putting raw? I've been, I mean, I put raw honey on my toast in the morning. If you have oh, a fantastic breakfast is sourdough toast, um, butter, but butter with no oil, seed oils in it. Just if it's, if it's cream, and salt, because <clears throat> if you like salted butter, I like salted butter. Kerry Gold is what I'm using right now. So, sourdough, 
bread, which should only be water, flour, and salt, or sourdough starter, um, and then butter and raw honey. That is a fantastic, delicious breakfast, and it's super good for you um, because, uh, I mean, I could talk about butter too, like being a saturated fat and saturated fats being good for you. But, um, all right, let's, uh, let's get into this Twitter thread here and see what we can learn. So let me, let me set up the screen so that we can dive into this. Um, so this is from this guy on Twitter. His name is Peng, Peng Giao, and he makes really good threads on Twitter. And keep in mind that this is, you know, just one research of raw honey. Uh, so it's not a complete comprehensive, this is raw honey, This is these are the facts. Like, you know, you're al always subject to the listener to do your own research. But um, it would be cool if you came along my research journey with me. So... He starts off, raw honey is one of the most versatile, life-giving substances on earth. Pretty pretty good hook there. Um, that would definitely hook me into wanting to read the thread. So good job on the hook. Calling it a superfood is an understatement. Here are 17 ways that it'll change your life. And uh, reading it may cause the sudden urge to start devouring honey by the spoonful. Oh, so this picture here um is just like raw it's just blocks of raw honey like straight from the hive i've had this before at my friend's house he just had like this here it was so fucking good like um so you first you just get the straight up honey which is like the sweetest fucking thing ever but then on top of that like this stuff on the outside here this wafer looking uh part it's really chewy and it, it chews like gum, but like it, 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 the best gum that you would ever have. Um, the way it chews, the way it tastes, it's just so good. And if you haven't tried honey straight, straight off the block, definitely would recommend, um, that shit's fire. So energy boost, honey is <clears throat> high in energy content. Um, so it's a good pre-workout and, you know, I've done, I've eaten honey before going on runs. Um, I don't know if I've ever noticed it made me, it made, it was like improved my running performance, but it's definitely, you know, I would think it, it's better than having like a, um, one of those shaker pre-workouts uh, that's like powder and stuff. I think if you just did honey and you put a little bit of salt on it as well for some electrolytes uh, before a workout, I think you would get a really good workout in. Um, so wound healing, yes, it is antibacterial. So if, yeah, if you have any uh, cut on your skin, Try putting honey on it. Um, I think I've done this. I did put honey on my cut. Um, again, I don't know if it sped up the healing process or whatever, but I certainly felt better putting honey on my skin than Neosporin. Uh, memory and cognition, I, I'm not sure. Um, don't know if my memory is better when I'm eating honey or... <clears throat> Oh, but here he does mention the antioxidant properties um, here. So restoring antioxidant defense system, which uh, if you have a good antioxidant defense system, it's a it's a indicator of um, preventing cognitive decline. Natural skin care. Honey draws moisture from the air and binds it to the skin giving you a fuller and younger skin with less wrinkles and acne. I haven't applied honey to my skin. I've, I mean, I've done it to cuts, but not just straight up on my face. I got to try that, though. That sounds uh, interesting. 
fights cardiovascular d disease. Um, okay, so it lowers LDL cholesterol and improves artery dilation uh, because of the flavonoids in it. So here's the thing. I, I'm not going to do like a super deep dive in it, and I'm, I don't know what flavonoids are, um, but just a general cursory overview of the benefits of raw honey or just this guy's research on it. Um, so weight loss, uh, it, it exhibits anti-obesity effects, which is crazy because it's like so sweet, but the type of sugar that it is, is obvious. I would think it's obvious that it's way better than the sugar you would find in Skittles or Hershey's chocolate bar. Um, yeah. So maybe instead of the chocolate bar for Hershey's, maybe reach for raw honey. And um, you could, just with that simple change, uh, you could change your life step by step. Gut health. Um, yeah, I, I, would, I would have to say in my experience, I do have good gut health when I am consuming uh, raw honey on a regular basis. Shampoo, I haven't tried it in my hair, but that sounds intriguing. Uh, sore throat and cough. I can't remember the last time I had a sore throat and cough when I was like in this mindset of like raw vitality. Um, but if I, if I do get one, I would definitely prefer that over, what is it? Um, NyQuil or, you know, any of those over the counter brands. Anti-inflammatory, yep, here we go. Um, phenolo, phenolic compounds have been shown to reduce inflammation. Uh, it's very uh, mineral and vitamin dense. Allergy relief, yes, I've, I've heard of that. Actually, in my experience, I don't know if it is completely, I still get allergies, um, so yeah, allergy relief, it's not saying like allergy cure, but, um, if you suffer allergies, I'm basically like now thinking of this as a substitute for most modern medicine. So maybe instead of reaching for Claritin or Allerclear, try raw honey. Good help. Blood sugar regulation, um... Dental and oral health. Interesting. Interesting stuff. Um, asthma, testosterone boost. I've heard of this one. This is an interesting one. Um, so, by increasing the production of the luteinizing hormone, consumption of honey has been shown to cause your testes to produce more testosterone. Their vasodilation effects have been shown to help with erectile dysfunction and other reproductive issues. I could see that happening. I definitely feel higher testosterone when I am consuming honey as well, like more, more masculine energy, I would say. And then cancer fighting, uh, which, is, which is great. Oh, some added bonuses here. Raw honey never goes bad. It tastes delicious. There's different variations, and it's all 100%. Mother Nature Made. So, yeah. Um, that is my exploration into raw honey. Um, let's, let's bring it back into... Um, oh, this, I can just click this. I'm kind of rusty with uh, OBS, especially I'm using my Mac because I'm traveling now. Um, but, okay, we're back here. So yeah, that is a, a little, uh, dive into raw honey. Uh, I hope you learned something more about it and maybe the next time you go out to the store, just look in the honey section and try to, try to cop some raw honey and maybe, uh, use it on your hair, your skin or. If you have erectile dysfunction, maybe try it for that. 
uh, pre-workout, add some salt with it. It's really cool. Like, it's really cool. All the things you can do with this very natural thing that is, like, everywhere. Um, it really makes you a question, like, what is all this medicine at the pharmacy actually, like, what is it for? And uh, why are we so dependent on it? Like, we would rather go to CVS to get these pills than get just go to your your local farmer or whatever and buy honey because maybe you think honey is only for eating or putting on a certain specific thing, but um, there's so many other things you can do with it. And uh, yeah, but it, to go back on um, what I've been putting it on, like I put raw honey on my cereal, my bread. Uh, it's really good on steak. Yeah, something about the saltiness of the steak plus the sweetness of the honey. Um, so good. Uh, I like to have my honey with fruit as well. It just gives that extra sweetness to fruit. Um, and yeah, I, I would say my increased consumption of raw honey has contributed to my improvements in health uh, that I've seen for myself. And to kind of segue into the next part of this podcast, which is raw milk. Um, this is <clears throat> this is interesting, raw milk, because like I said in the beginning, I was I, I, I was afraid of it uh, a few years ago. I would think most people are uh, still, but at least from what I'm seeing in the internet, there's kind of like a a renaissance of raw milk that a lot of people are advocating for it. Um, there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, it gets kind of fucked with uh, how raw milk has been demonized by like big industries, commercial industries, and that how uh, like pasteurized milk has been touted as superior when pasteurization machines have only been around for a certain fraction of human uh the span of human life and for probably most of our existence we were just drinking raw milk um so let's uh let's let's maybe we'll, I'll talk about my personal experience with raw milk first um so i first heard about raw milk from just twitter uh, everyone I follow some health people on Twitter and they're just talking about it. And at first I'm a little, a little uneasy about it because that I've been so deeply programmed into thinking that raw milk is bad for you, but I have an open mind. Um, I'm op always open for new life experiences and, uh, you know, I think of a soul bra who was just talking about it enough and I was, I just got curious, and I was living in Philly at the time, so I just Googled raw milk near near me, um, and there was a store selling raw milk um, in the city. Luckily, it is legal in Pennsylvania. It's actually kind of crazy that raw milk is illegal in some states in the U.S. Um, because it's been so demonized. But luckily, it was legal in PA, so picked up my first... Uh, like half gallon of raw milk, probably last year, uh, early last year, 2023. And dude, when I, the first sip I took of it, it was like the most creamy, delicious fucking thing I've ever had. It was like a, it was like a milkshake. Honestly, it was so fucking good. And so I'm just drinking this and I'm just like fucking loving it. And then I'm like looking up the benefits too of raw milk and um, just like totally turned on to the whole raw milk like movements or whatever. Um, so we're just, I guess like maybe we can talk about the effects of pasteurization on milk. So pasteurization is you're heating milk up to a certain temperature to kill the bacteria 
first of all, like bacteria is like negatively connotated. Um, but there is bacteria that it's good for you as well. Um, and there's a lot of other enzymes in raw milk that are killed in the pasteurization process. Um, so you actually end up getting a, a less nutrient dense liquid after pasteurization um, as well. I think it's an enzyme called lactase, which is like destroyed during in pasteurization and people who are lactose intolerant need not need, but again, this is kind of reaching the edge of my knowledge here, but basically, uh, raw milk, people who are lactose intolerant can drink raw milk without a problem because of a certain enzyme. Maybe this thread I'm about to go into will, will, will explain it. Um, but other benefits I can think of off the top of my head, uh, raw milk is very hydrating. Um, it's actually like more hydrating than water because of its like mineral and vitamin content. And I mean, it's delicious. <laughs> you can, uh, if you really want to make, make a little milkshake, you can put maple syrup in it and mix maple syrup. You can put some raw eggs in it as well. Oh, raw eggs. Um, maybe save that for another podcast or just like raw. I, I've been getting down more of the raw stuff lately, the raw food road. Um, basically like raw is just very, uh, it works for me. Um, so far I've, this is the healthiest I've ever been in my life right now. And I, I feel like I've, especially in the last two years, have been only getting healthier and healthier. Um, and I just like look back on myself like when I was maybe, you know, even like three or four years ago, compared to how I am now, it's, it's kind of crazy. Like I generally feel really fucking good every day. Like I don't have any health issues or anything. I'm just kind of going about my life and enjoying the fuck out of it. So, and I would say raw honey and raw milk are contributors to it. Um, I had been drinking pasteurized milk most of my life. And I think maybe even before I started drinking raw milk, I was starting to get irritated by pasteurized milk in my stomach if I had drank too much. But when I drink a lot of raw milk, sometimes I'll just fucking gulp that shit down because it's so fucking good. And I never have any stomach, stomach issues with it. Um, so, but again, that's just me. Um, so yeah, lots of benefits in, in my opinion. Um, let's get into this thread here. So let's, uh, set up the screen again. Start from the top. So, <laughs> This guy is self-aware about uh, how Twitter thinks about raw milk. Raw is law. Um, so this is, again, Peng Zhao. Um, again, this guy makes great threads on Twitter. So let's, uh, let's get into it. So what is raw milk? That's a good, actually a good way to start. Um, it just means that it hasn't been heated above 145 degrees a.k.a. pasteurization. And anything that doesn't say raw in the grocery store is has been heated above 145 degrees. Uh, so when it's pasteurized, their nutritional value is degraded um, because it kills off the enzymes that are crucial for maintaining a healthy gut and immune system. Oh, here we go, lactase. Uh, lactase is an enzyme responsible for breaking down the milk sugar lactose. When this enzyme is destroyed during pasteurization, it makes it harder for our bodies to break down lactose. So basically that is lactose intolerance. Um, but if you're drinking raw milk, you don't have this problem if, if you're lactose intolerant. Okay. A little bit of the history. 
Um, before the 19th century, we had been drinking raw milk for thousands of years. And then people started to live in cities, so they brought their cows with them. And cows living in a city, obviously you're not going to get the most healthy cows uh, because they need all that free, free range and grass. So you probably don't get the best milk either. And then people would be getting sick from unhealthy cows. Makes sense to me so far. So then this guy, Louis Pasteur, came along and he was just like, heat that shit up, bruh. Um, that'll kill all the bad shit. So then, then they started heating that shit up. So immediately people stopped getting sick. And also pasteurization reduced liability, made transport easier, and profit mar margins bigger. A lot of cities followed suit. And by 1920, milk pasteurization regulations had reached every part of the country. Most are still, most are still in place to this day. So, why is raw milk better? Let's look at this, uh, this graphic here. So, here are some uh, characteristics of raw milk on the left. It's a lot of, a lot of good shit here. And in raw milk, cow or human, which is uh, another interesting topic like breast milk, which is like really fucking good for, for, uh, your health as well. But all these enzymes are still active in this kind of milk. And then when you pasteurize it, you, you inhibit the enzymes, the probiotics, the omega-3 fats, the bioavailable vitamins, calcium, binding proteins, they're all they're all destroyed or inhibited in, in cow milk. And basically, if you drink soy milk, you're not getting shit, bruh. Um, so this is a cool graphic. Um... So, studies have found that by drinking raw milk, you have a lower rate, there's associated lower rates of asthma, allergies, eczema, infections, fevers, respiratory illnesses. It's a life-giving superfood. Um, let's keep going here. This is, a, this is a good long thread here. I'm definitely going to link it. But um, he gets really, really deep here. Yes, if this is a good one. If you, uh, if you want to try raw milk, go to realmilk.com and try to find a raw milk source near you. This is what I used originally when I was in Philly here. Great website. Sometimes you can find it in the pet aisle as pet food, uh, which is uh, it's a workaround that grocery stores have been taking advantage of. Um, yeah, the future of raw milk is bright as people educate themselves. Legalization is imminent. So now we have the knowledge. Um, so we have some more knowledge about raw milk, which is, which is cool. You can, uh, of course, you know, keep keep researching by yourself if you're still interested. Um, so, in terms of how my life has been different since I started drinking raw milk, again, the way I see my health today, I see it as an accumulation of things that I've changed in my life. Um, and one of those changes has been switching from pasteurized to raw milk. Um, and I would say it has improved my health. I think it's worked for me. I, 
I'm still like super, I'm still pretty highly energetic and active. Um, I feel, I feel better when I drink raw milk. I mean, I mean, I, the fact that it's just so yummy is like just good enough for me. Um, it is more expensive for sure. In California, a half gallon here is $10, which is kind of fucking ridiculous. But when I was in Ephrata, Pennsylvania, which is kind of like Amish town, PA, half gallon, three bucks. So, you know, depending on where you live, you could get a really good deal or an expensive deal. Um, so, yeah, if you're curious about raw milk, definitely give it a try. If you're lactose intolerant, definitely give it a try. I, I feel like you'd be missing milk because uh, I just fucking love milk. I will drink raw milk straight up by the glass. I'll put raw eggs in it. I'll put maple syrup, um, bee pollen in it. It's just like, it's just such a good thing to, to drink for me, honestly. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up here, but that was a little research episode on raw honey and raw milk. I really enjoyed making this actually. I had no idea how I was, I just had the two threads pulled up. I didn't know anything else that I was going to say about it. Um, obviously I'm not like an expert, like this guy on Twitter is, he's got way more deeper knowledge than me, but um, I don't feel the need to do that much of a deep dive because someone already did and I'm open enough to maybe try their suggestions because I have that open mind and I think it's worked for me. Again, this may not work for you. So, um, but if you got this far in the episode, thank you for listening to me. Um, really appreciate it. And, uh, that's it. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.